Right, so moving away from text for just a little bit, we're going to have a think about how to place images in uh, an InDesign document. Now, obviously, I'm working on the basis that you already have found your image, you have it saved, and you have it saved in your OneDrive folder with the InDesign file and any other stuff that's going to end up on your layout. Um, remember how important it is to keep these things all in the same place. So over here, I've got my Neon Issue 6 um, folder, and I've, like I said before, mine's messy, but it's, I'd rather it was messy and had everything in there than you were keeping stuff in all kinds of different folders. Even if it's just like a drawer that you've shoved everything in, at least we know it's in that drawer. So let's say that I want to place an image. What I haven't done yet, and which you will need to do, is moved over, I've got this rather magnificent photo of a handsome fella. Slim. Oh. Uh, and I need to make sure that goes into my Neon Issue 6 folder. So I'm always keeping anything I need in that folder. Um, and then I'm going to come over to InDesign and I'm going to go to File and Place. If you're a shortcut kind of person, you can do that just with Control D. So file and place, and then you can find the image you need. Now, what I should probably have done is named my image so I know exactly what I'm looking for. But um, it says Richard Brotio on Splash. Um, so um, all I did there went a little bit too quick is once I've selected one, you'll see this image start sort of to follow the mouse around. And it's just saying to me, hey, can you put me in a frame? So every image in InDesign has to go into a frame first. So I've already got my frame. I can tell the difference between a picture frame and a text frame because it has this big cross on it. And then I click there and I can insert it into uh, the frame. Now, uh, so far so good, but there's a few little issues to consider. So I'm going to zoom in a bit closer so you can better see what I'm doing. Now, I'm not overly enamored with the framing of this. It feels a little bit cut off, and the original image was a bit taller, wasn't it? So straight away, I'm thinking, is this the, actually the best layout for this image? What I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to try bringing this frame up higher, like that. Now, I've got some overset text here, which is potentially a problem, um, but I can fix that later and um, I will show you how. Now am I actually happy with the position of the dog in the photo? Well, not hugely, no. I don't know actually, maybe I am, I don't know, but I'm gonna experiment. Now, if I just click and drag on this blue box, it's just gonna move the whole frame with the photo in it around. And that is not what I want to do. What I want to do is move the photo within the frame. Double click here, and this box has changed from brown to blue. So I'm now looking at a brown box, which is telling me I'm now moving the photo around in the frame. The frame ain't going anywhere, but the photo is. So I'm actually thinking this looks much better like this, where I can actually see Doggy's little feet and all of that. I know the text is still over there, but I'll fix that later. So by double clicking on the box, I can switch between blue, which is the frame and will move everything together, or I can um, double click uh, again and I have a brown box. And that brown box allows me to move the photo within the frame that we have set up for it. Zooming out a little bit, you can see the brown is bigger than the blue. So I've got some wiggle room, you see? And I'm moving the photo around within the frame, making sure that we get to the edge of the page. Um, I'll refresh your memories on why in a second.